the infection occurs due to contamination of the environment by the urine of the infected animal usually the rodents or other domestic animals this contaminated soil or the environment is available during the post monsoon phase or post rainfall phase during that period the slushy waters the water collections are available for contact with the, by the human beings once the human beings wade through the rain water or rain filled slushy water the contaminated urine in the rain water or in the slushy water will get in contact with the skin of the host and that produces infection poor sanitation particularly inadequate drainage facilities which is very common in our country we don't have proper drainage system in our country presence of rodents in the environment cattle and stray dogs they urinate indiscriminately on the roads and the rain further adds to the woes walking in the contaminated environment or rain water slushes or working barefoot in the fields poses a high risk but it is difficult to pinpoint the source of infection in any given case any person can get infected if he is exposed to the contaminated water contaminated urine or contaminated soil and environment leptospirosis is recognized as an occupational disease this is because people who work in certain occupations they have the contact with the animals animal excreta and the contaminated soil and the contaminated water that's why occupational exposure by farmers who who cultivate rice sugarcane vegetables who domesticate cattle who rear pigs all of them they have a higher chance of getting in contact with the animal excreta like animal urine and animal feces and also the contaminated environment wherein the animals would have excreted the bacilli into the environment sewage workers who don't work with protective equipment abattoirs butchers these also these people also come in contact with the animal excreta and then human excreta so much so they get uh, sort of themselves vulnerable for contamination and also introduction and exposure of the infection exposure of the infecting agent veterinarians who work with these domestic animals they have a chance to come in contact with the excreta of the animals lab staff who deal with these specimens miners who always work in the in the soil and soldiers who will, who are not protected and then go and contaminate themselves with the contaminated soil fishermen particularly those who, who do the fishing inland and not those on the sea because this organism doesn't thrive in the saline water of the sea so fishermen who who catch fish in the fresh water or inland pools they are at a greater risk and of course soldiers we have already seen rick and today apart from the occupational exposure there are certain recreational activities which expose the human beings to water particularly the contaminated water such as swimming sailing gardening marathon runners and all these people they have got an exposure chance of exposure for the infecting agent which are the reservoirs of infection this disease primarily affects the animals that's why it's a zoonosis and then these animals they harbor the organisms in their body and excrete the leptospirae in the urine notoriously rodents are common rats which we see ratus 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 norvegicus mus musculus these are different forms of rodents of course dogs domestic as well as stray dogs wild animals domesticated animals particularly cows and pigs caged game animals all these they have the leptospirae in the body uh, in the kidneys particularly and the the renal tubules harbor these organisms 
and leptospire are excreted in their urine and that urine contaminates the soil or directly comes in contact with the human beings and produces the human infection. What are the modes of transmission? Is it only due to contamination with the urine by direct contact or tissues of the infected animal or are there any indirect other modes of transmission? Of course, direct contact with the urine or tissues of an infected animal or the primary mechanism of transmission through the skin abrasions or through intact mucous membranes of the GI tract of the respiratory tract. Indirect contact broken skin with infected soil, if there is a cut or something on the skin of the feet and or the hands, if there is a contact with the infected soil or infected water or vegetation, then of course indirect contact can occur. Ingestion of the contaminated food and water can lead to infection through the GI tract. Of course, droplet infection, inhalation of droplets of infected urine, dry droplets of infected urine is possible, but it is not a very efficacious method of transmission. These are the three modes of transmission. Apart from this, other rarer modes of transmission, human to human transmission uh, are, are reported, but they, they do not really form the major method of transmission. Look here about the transmission cycle. From the animal source, from the animal fecal matter, from the urine, particularly the urine of the infected animals or the tissues of the infected animal, they can come in contact uh, with the human beings or the human being comes in contact with the animal source that is a direct contact or this animal source of infection can get into the environment and contaminate the environment. Remember that these organisms survive for a long period in the environment, in the soil, in the water and in the vegetation and when the human beings come in contact with the soil, vegetation or water which is infected already by the uh, by the organisms present from in the soil contaminated from the animal sources then human infection occurs remember human infection is accidental and not a natural uh, host man is not a natural host no human to human transmission is effectively reported this picture in a way summarizes the transmission and the different effects the disease can produce. The rats, asymptomatic rodent carriers, we have plenty of them in almost every home, in the fields, the workplace, everywhere. Wild animals like bats, deers and the asymptomatic rodent infection might get into the wild animals or livestock like cows and pigs and cattle and of course domestic animals, stray dogs and domesticated drugs. All these when they get infected, they suffer the disease silently and then excrete the bacilli into the soil and water and thus contaminate either directly from the rodents or indirectly from other mammals. The soil and water are contaminated when the man comes in contact with the soiled water or, uh, so, or the soil which is contaminated then of course he develops leptospiral infection. The exposure occurs, the infection takes place. That can result in leptospiral pulmonary hemorrhagic syndrome or myocarditis, hepatic dysfunction, renal dysfunction, meningitis, uitis, all these different types of manifestations are possible. So what is the natural history of the disease? If human beings come in contact with the infective agent from an animal source either directly or indirectly exposure occurs. Exposure to the bacillus results in infection. This infection can produce overt clinical illness or it may become inapparent and then the patient may totally overcome the infection. So inapparent infection, overt clinical illness. Inapparent infection can lead to no carrier state of course and then it may pass off just like that and the organism might have reached a dead end and no further transmission occurs. Whereas when there is overt clinical illness, it can present in the form of anectric illness or ectric illness that is 
leptospiral fever with without jaundice and leptospiral syndrome with jaundice anectric illness is usually mild and recovery is the rule ectric illness can be troublesome it can produce more morbidity and more suffering and it can also result in some fatality so this is in nutshell the natural history of uh, leptospiral infection and then the disease what happens if we come in contact with leptospiral organisms and if they enter our body leptospirae immediately get into the blood stream and then the target organ for the leptospira are the blood vessels the damaged the small blood vessels this damaged small blood vessels is termed as vasculitis it could be a direct toxic vasculitis or immune vasculitis due to the antibodies produced by the organism either direct toxic injury or immunological injury this results in massive migration of fluid from the intravascular compartment to the interstitial compartment so much so there will be hypovolemia there will be renal dysfunction there will be vascular injury to the internal organs because of hypoperfusion so the key pathological mechanism is a vasculitis this vasculitis results in pulmonary renal hepatic cerebral and other manifestations the organisms of course also travel into the cerebrospinal fluid and they can be isolated from the cerebrospinal fluid the body fluids that can show the organisms are primarily the blood the urine and the cerebrospinal fluid so remember that the direct consequence of leptospiral infection the pathogenic mechanism is small vessel vasculitis